Welcome back to the Art of Cerclage. In this video, we will focus on physical exam indicated cerclage. The learning objectives for this video include reviewing the indications for physical exam indicated cerclage, discussing important concepts and techniques specific to its placement, and utilizing a model to demonstrate the cerclage. First, let's review physical exam indicated cerclage. It's painless cervical dilation in the second trimester. Usually it's detected by vaginal exam and some patients may have prolapsed or exposed membranes. You may have heard this as rescue, emergency, or salvage cerclage, but it's important to note that this is incorrect terminology that is not used in the literature. Additionally, patients can associate certain connotations with these terms, so it's best to avoid using them. Prior to offering and placing a physical exam indicated cerclage, it's important to rule out labor, abruption, and infection. Sometimes an amniocentesis is needed to evaluate for subclinical signs of infection. Usually this is recommended when the cervix is two or more centimeters dilated in the second trimester because 50% of these patients have microbial invasion of the amniotic cavity. Another important point to remember is that patients who have had a physical exam indicated cerclage in the current pregnancy should be offered a history indicated cerclage in their next pregnancy. Let's transition to placement of this type of cerclage. The goal of this cerclage is to close a dilated cervix with a suture and keep it closed. This stitch is placed to prolong the current pregnancy and improve the pregnancy outcome. The two techniques we've previously discussed in this series for vaginally placed cerclage are the McDonald method and the Sherrod Carr method. As you may recall, the Sherrod Carr method requires dissection of the anterior and posterior cervix. In a physical exam indicated cerclage, the cervix is often too thin or too short for adequate dissection, so the only technique that can be used is the McDonald method, which we will be demonstrating on our model. Now it's important that we discuss some concepts. This is a normal, non-dilated cervix. Let's focus in on the amniotic sac. When the cervix is not dilated, the amount of pressure exerted by the amniotic fluid is evenly distributed, so the tension is spread uniformly on the entire inferior portion of the uterus. Now let's evaluate the situation in a cervix that is dilated, like in a candidate for a physical exam indicated cerclage. Note how the membranes descend into the dilated cervix and can even prolapse or go past the external os. This descent changes the pressure of the amniotic fluid. Instead of being evenly distributed, the greatest point of tension is on the descended or prolapsed membranes. This is a really important concept. You can see that the risk of P-prom, or the accidental rupture of membranes during cerclage placement, is increased because of this increased pressure. To help with this, there's various methods that we employ to help reduce the prolapse membranes and thereby reduce the risk of rupture of membranes during the surgery. The two overall methods are gravity and mechanical reduction. Gravity. First, positioning helps. We can place the patient in Trendelenburg, which may help the membranes recede towards the uterus. Additionally, placing upward traction with ring forceps on the cervix accentuates this gravitational effect. Mechanical. Additionally, a balloon can be used to mechanically drive back the membranes. Both Foley catheters or Cook catheters, which are also used as labor induction methods, can be used. Here we see a Cook and a 30cc Foley balloon side by side. Once we inflate the balloon, we can gently insert it into the cervix and reduce the membranes back towards the uterus. We prefer the use of a Cook catheter over a Foley and we'll use it in our model demonstration. One reason is because of the excess tip on the Foley balloon, the part that extends beyond the balloon. This tip can rub along the cervix and cause bleeding or potentially traumatize the membranes. The Cook, on the other hand, doesn't have as much tip protrusion. The Cook catheter also has the added benefit of a stylet that can be used to guide the balloon in the cervical canal. To guide the Foley, you need a ring forcep on that flexible tip to stabilize it, potentially making correct placement more difficult. There are two other important points to cover, antibiotics and tocolytics. Many feel that for physical exam indicated cerclage, antibiotics like ANSEF and tocolytics like indomethacin should be given. 
A randomized trial that included 50 women reported that the patients who received antibiotics and post-operative indomethacin had a greater number of prolonged pregnancies compared to women who did not receive these medications. More research needs to be conducted to further clarify the effectiveness and the risks of antibiotics and tocolytics, but for now, these medications are at the discretion of the surgeon. Now that we've reviewed pertinent concepts of physical exam indicated cerclage, we can demonstrate the steps of the McDonald technique on the model. The dilated cervix and exposed membranes are seen clearly on this model. Betadine can be irritating to exposed membranes, so some providers prefer copious normal saline for PrEP. Place the speculum or retractor with caution. You don't want to accidentally place the bill of the instrument in the cervical canal. You want to make sure to place it in the posterior vagina. We attempt to place the cerclage as high as possible without injuring the bladder, but unlike in history-indicated placement, exposed membranes may hinder your ability to go as high as possible. We use different methods to reduce the exposed membranes, thereby decreasing the risk of inserting the suture into the membrane. Grasp the edges of the cervix with ring forceps and gently pull superiorly. With this motion, the membranes will often recede into the uterus and be out of the surgical field. Trendelenburg positioning of the patient can also assist you with this. When the membranes are flush with the cervix or even protruding into the vagina, we may need a balloon to mechanically push back the membranes. We prefer using a Cook catheter because the tip is much smaller and the stylet helps assist us with our control and placement of the balloon. Inflate the balloon to the estimated size of the cervical canal. Insert the balloon into the cervix and apply gentle pressure. At one point, you will feel the balloon give. That pressure change helps you know the position. The balloon should be posterior to the cervix and in the uterus. At this point, you remove the stylet and leave the balloon in place to help with continuous reduction of the exposed membranes. Suturing on a dilated cervix is very different. In history-indicated cerclage, the cervix is thick. Here, the cervix is thin, shortened, and delicate. A ring forcep can help you manipulate the cervix and give you the appropriate tension. We start at 12 o'clock. When driving your suture, you want to remain in the substance of the cervix. The needle, and therefore the suture, should not be seen in the os or the membranes. An unconcealed suture can irritate the membranes and possibly snag on something or be a place for infection to seed. Normally, we attempt to place our suture at 12, 8, 5, and 2 o'clock positions, avoiding the cervical vessels at 3 and 9 o'clock. But it's more important to travel as much as you can without the suture entering the cervical canal. At times, you may need to enter in more than four places to continue the purse string stitch but it's important to try to limit the extra suture placements as you don't want to continually puncture and damage the cervix and increase the risk of rupturing the membranes. Once you've completed placement of the suture, it's important to deflate the balloon and secure the cerclage without trapping the membranes. An assistant can gradually and slowly deflate and pull the balloon out while the surgeon is pulling the suture taut. While cinching the suture, make sure the membranes are not trapped or pouching out. It's important to tie the knot tightly. Some become concerned about constricting the cervical vasculature, but generally this does not happen. It's more important to have a secure knot and to see that the membranes are not passing through the cervical canal. Leave an air knot for removal. For visual purposes, we used green ethabon suture. However, Merceline is the most common suture used for a physical exam indicated cerclage. This concludes the demonstration. Let's review the important concepts from this video. Physical exam indicated cerclage can be placed for women who present with painless cervical dilation in the second trimester after they've been evaluated and excluded for labor, abruption, and infection. The McDonald technique is used and can be technically challenging. Positioning in Trendelenburg, elevating the cervix, and use of balloon catheters can assist in placement of the cerclage. There is some data that antibiotics and tocolytics may be effective at prolonging pregnancy if physical exam indicated cerclage is placed, but more research needs to be conducted in this area. We hope this video is helpful. In our next video, we will discuss abdominally placed cerclage.